Now, last week we got a chance to check out on this channel my first look at the Meteor Lake laptops from Intel. And needless to say, we know the Asus had some issues. It was buggy, but there were some updates. We're gonna show you how that addressed a lot of those issues in the upcoming full review. But I also took a look at that bonus unboxing of the Acer Swift Go 14. That's the one we have here today. And that one is actually run pretty smoothly. I like what the Meteor Lake brings to the table. It's better battery life, more efficiency, but it doesn't necessarily mean better CPU performance. But what we are seeing is better GPU performance with the Intel Arc graphics. We've got a lot to talk about here today. So sit back, relax, and here is my review of the Acer Swift Go 14, all new for 2024. Coming up. Now, before we get to the unit itself, I just want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Acer. I'm not being sponsored by Acer. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Acer is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. This is not a review unit from Acer. Now, pricing for the unit that I purchased is $999.99. That nets you the 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X RAM, one terabyte of SSD storage, and that 14-inch OLED display with a 90 hertz refresh rate. Again, $999, I think is a pretty good deal, especially with this brand new Core Ultra processor. For those that are interested, of course, I will leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. So, you know the drill, folks. Let's get this out of the box. So, what do we get in the box here? Let's start off with this. This is going to be the power cord. You get a USB-C charger here. All kinds of stuff. A, a setup guide, Swift Go 14. I ordered it from Acer. This was not sent by them, just for those wondering. And a more basic look here, right? This is a basic look. All right, so this is an all metal design. It's uh, actually not bad, pretty nice. You can see it here. It's a little blown out from the silver, but you can sort of get an idea. There it is. You can get the idea of it and you can see it here. Now, as you can see, the build quality is actually a lot better than I thought it would be, especially with Acer. I haven't noticed the best build quality in the past, but this certainly seems like a step up, at least in my opinion, as far as this chassis is concerned. Okay, let's check out the port selection. On the left side are two USB Type-C ports. They are Thunderbolt 4 ports that are full function. That's always good to see. Next to that is an HDMI 2.1 port. And next to that is a USB-A 3.2 Gen 1 port. Now moving over to the right side is a micro SD card reader. Next to that is a 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack, a second USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, and finally a Kensington lock port to round out the ports on this unit. I would say all in all, a pretty nice port selection here. Now, I would like to see them split up those USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on each side, instead of having them on one side. The same thing with the Asus I just took a look at, so just something I wanted to point out. Okay, let's check out the internals, and the first thing you'll notice is the two fans for cooling. We'll get into the thermal performance, fan noise, and all that later on in this review. you also notice that 65-watt-hour battery. We'll get into the battery life later on as well. Now, as far as what's user-upgradable, the SSD that's included with this unit that I purchased does have user-upgradability. You can swap it out for more storage, and as you can see from the reads and writes here, certainly fast enough for what you need this laptop to do. And the good news here is there's a second M.2 SSD slot here, also Gen 4, and that one, of course, is great to have, especially when you want to expand out the storage, and that's not something we normally see on a 14-inch laptop having a second SSD slot, a welcome addition indeed. Now, unfortunately, like most 14-inch laptops nowadays, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard, not upgradable by the user. Now, you can configure this with up to 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, and it is running in dual-channel mode. Now, the unit that I purchased has 16 gigabytes of RAM, certainly enough for what I need, but I do like the option of having 32 gigabytes. That's always nice to have. And when it comes to the wireless, you're looking at killer Wi-Fi 6E and a Bluetooth 5.1 combo card. Now that is slotted in, it's not soldered in, so if you need to change it out, you have that option. But the good news is the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi both have been working flawlessly, no issues with either one. 
All right, let's talk about the display, and it's a good one. It's a 14-inch OLED display with a resolution of 2880 by 1800, and for those keeping score, 243 pixels per inch, a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It is a glossy display, so depending on your lighting conditions, you might notice some glare or reflections, and it's also a 90 hertz display, giving you a little bit more smooth scrolling, a little bit more fluid experience, although it's not 120 like we saw on the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED. This one is 90 hertz. Now, Really good metrics here, 401 nits of screen brightness when it comes to standard dynamic range, and it goes up even brighter during HDR, so very good in that regard. And not only is it good for indoor use, but certainly doable outdoors as well. And as with any OLED display, you get the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors, the really high contrast, and it's really great for content creation. We have excellent coverage of the color gamut. It's color accurate. So everything you need to do, color grading, Photoshop, Lightroom, video editing is here. Now, one thing to note, this is a non-touch display. It would have been nice to have touch, but not a deal breaker as far as I'm concerned. And the overall takeaway is this is excellent for not only consuming media, but for content creation and overall general use. An excellent, sharp, bright, vibrant display here. Good job by Acer here. So this is the camera on the brand new Acer Swift Go 14 running the Intel Meteor Lake processor the Core Ultra 7 155H, brand new. And this is a 1440p video. Now, as you can see, it's pretty good in terms of the resolution. One thing to note, it is not an IR camera. That means you cannot log in with face recognition with Windows Hello. But there is a fingerprint scanner. The power button doubles as that fingerprint scanner. And the setup was easy and it works very well. Now, one thing to note, again, this uh, does have some of the AI effects. What does that mean? So... That means you get the background blur, you get the auto framing, and you get all that stuff. Here's the auto framing, and here you can see some of these studio effects. And then, of course, you can do the background blur, standard blur, portrait blur. And then, of course, you can do the eye contact, always keeping you directly in line of sight. But what is interesting here, it has an NPU, a neural processing unit to handle those AI effects or studio effects that we just saw. So that's one of the things that the Meteor Lake processor is bringing to the table with its NPU. Again, I want to know what you think about all this. Let me know in the comments section below. And just like the Asus ZenBook 14 OLED we just looked at, this is running the brand new Meteor Lake processor, the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, a 28 watt CPU with a total of 16 cores. That's six performance cores, eight efficient cores, two low power efficient cores, and a total of 22 threads, exactly the same as we saw on that Asus. And it also has the Intel Arc graphics, which are a major improvement over the Intel Iris Xe. And as you can see from these performance numbers here, the single and multi-core performance is actually pretty good, although not quite as good as the 45-watt H series we saw last year, but it definitely step up over the U series, which is a 15-watt CPU. This is akin to that P series where we saw with 28 watts. Here we have 28 watts as well. But where we're seeing a big increase in terms of performance is going to be the graphics. The Intel Arc graphics are a step up over the Iris Xe, as you can see from the 3D Mark Fire Strike score and the 3D Mark Time Spike score. And let's talk the Cinebench 2024, and here you can see the CPU single core score of 101, which was the exact same score on the ZenBook 14 OLED that I just took a look at, also running Meteor Lake processor here. And when it comes to the multi-core performance here, a little bit better than what we saw on the Asus here, scoring 790 versus the Asus, which scored 732. So a little bit better here. Not quite as good as the Silicon on the MacBook Pro 16, as we saw, or on the MacBook Pro 14 that I'm using. Now, as far as the Cinebench, Bench R23 year over year over the U series. We're seeing a nice little increase here. It's about 15 or so percent increased performance single core and about 54 percent multi core performance increase. So a nice step up over there. Again, this is 28 watts versus 15 watts. And then when we look at the Time Spy, you can see here clearly that the Intel Arc graphics are a step up very good in that regard. Now, you can actually game on this a little bit better than the Iris Xe, as you can see from these playable frame rates. Of course, it's just just depends on your settings, but definitely a step up over the Iris Xe graphics. There is no doubt about it. 
And we're definitely seeing a more efficient processor with less power consumption and very similar to what we saw with the ZenBook 14 that we just looked at with the Meteor Lake here. We're also seeing much better power consumption numbers in the initial workload and also the sustained workload. So very good in that regard, getting closer to what we saw with the AMD offerings as well as the Apple Silicon. So getting more efficient, that's really good. And good news when it comes to thermal throttling, it got a passing score of 98.6% when I ran the time spy stress test, indicating very little, if any, thermal throttling. Very good in that regard. Now, when it comes to the surface temperatures, never getting overly hot, although there are a couple of warm spots here and there, one above the keyboard, below the display, and on the underside, never getting overly hot. So pretty good management in terms of those surface temperatures overall. Now, as far as fan noise is concerned, you will notice it under heavy load, reaching as high as 51, 52 decibels, maybe even higher depending on what you're doing. But as far as when you're in the balance mode doing everyday tasks, fan noise was not much of an issue. And when it comes to battery life, you're looking at a 65 watt hour battery. That's a smaller battery than we saw on the ZenBook 14 OLED that I just reviewed. And it did eight hours and 52 minutes on the PC Mark 10 Modern Office battery test. It did nine hours and 51 minutes on the video playback and an hour and 16 minutes on the gaming test. These are really good numbers, especially with an OLED display, 90 Hertz, but of course wasn't quite as good as a ZenBook 14 OLED with its bigger battery. And I think we're seeing the big difference here as far as that's concerned, but the overall efficiency of the Meteor Lake processor is coming through here. Nice battery life overall. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. And one thing I noticed is the hinges are on really good here. I didn't notice a lot of screen wobble, something that's plagued a lot of these Acer laptops in the past. Not much of an issue here. Now, when it comes to the keyboard, a pleasant surprise here and how good it's been for typing out long documents, emails, and the overall experience has been pretty good as far as the tactility, the feedback, and of course, the key travel. No issues on that front. And it does have a multi-stage backlight. It worked out really well against these dark keys allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. Good job on that front. Now, when it comes to the touchpad, the experience as far as scrolling and the gestures, all responsive here, very good. It's a nice size touchpad. I have no complaints here. It's been working out as expected here. Pretty good. Now, when it comes to the audio, you're looking at DTS audio here, and I would say the overall sound is okay. Nothing special here. Could use a little bit more volume, a little bit more bass in my opinion, but of course, I want you to be the judge. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. Now, let's give it a listen. Okay, people, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Acer Swift Go 14 here as we go into 2024 with this Meteor Lake processor? Bright, colorful, 90 hertz OLED display. Arc graphics are a big step up over the Intel Iris Xe. There's no doubt about it. Two M.2 NVMe SSD slots. You got to love that. Up to 32 gigabytes of RAM is great. QHD webcam is excellent here. Runs relatively quiet, although you will notice it in the heavy workloads. You will notice them, but really for most use, it's going to be pretty quiet. Relatively thin and light design here, improved battery life, and it now has the NPU to help with a lot of these AI effects you get in the camera, etc., etc. Now, as far as the negatives, only a couple of things here. Soldered RAM, which of course has become more commonplace nowadays, and then the glossy display, although not much of an issue outdoors, as you noticed in those outdoor shots because of the good brightness, the really vibrancy comes through. But depending on your lighting conditions, you might notice some glare and reflections. Of course, keep that in mind. But my overall takeaway is the Swift Go 14 with the Meteor Lake processor is a more efficient laptop with what? decent battery life, good performance, and overall great little package here. And I highly recommend it as we head into 2024 so if you're in the market for a thin and light laptop the swift go 14 may be the way to go so please hit the like button please subscribe please share this video don't forget to leave a comment 
in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and that platform formerly known as Twitter. So until next time, this is Andrew, and I'll see you in the next video.